anti-hijab civil disobedience leads to the arrest of Iranian women. Amid the Iranian regime's intensifying campaign to strictly enforce the nation's compulsory hijab laws, the arrests of women who have begun to protest these ordinances have also increased. Recently, despite the restrictions, voices of women speaking out over this issue have become more prominent. On July 12th, during their No to Hijab campaign, many women posted photos and videos of themselves removing their hijab accompanied with captions such as, The Good Feeling of Freedom, No to Hijab. Many were arrested for their civil disobedience in the form of publicly removing their hijab in defiance of Iran's compulsory hijab mandates. Ahman Vahidi, the interior minister, said that the government's special unit would take action against those breaking the rules. Some called the hijab violators <laughs> Satan's troops, and some alleged that these women committed um, moharabe, meaning enemy of God. One prominent arrest is that of 28-year-old Sepide Rational. She was detained on July, July 16th following a viral video in which she was confronted by a regime-supporting woman for not wearing a hijab on the public bus. The religious woman yelled that she would re report Rashno to the authorities before the other bus riders pushed her off the vehicle at the nearest stop, leaving Rashno bitten and bleeding in the process. Despite the injury, Rashno was arrested instead of the woman who assaulted her. Yeah, should we watch the video of that again? Yeah, sure. Well, we haven't talked about this on this channel. Oh, yeah. we could. I talked so, about it. So, Armin, do you want to give us like... Do you want to give us a broad overview or like mini breakdown first before we dive into what we're looking at? Because I want to talk about kind of the fallout from the no to hijab campaign. And this is one mm -hmm. of the most prominent examples of it that really went viral on in Iranian social media. Yeah, so this was supposed to be, this was a day that people would uh, be, I mean, the government officially recognizes this day as the day that you celebrate hijab. So the people who are anti a uh, mandatory hijab want to turn this, you know, repurpose that into a day to take back their freedom and come out and, you know, uh, violate the law and come out with that hijab, right? Um, and again, I've mentioned this many times, this is not just about the hijab, this is about um, opposing governments, you know, fascist tendencies on people's like day-to-day -day lives. Um, and the hijab is not just the hijab in Iran. The hijab is the official uh, stamp of the Islamic Republic, and the way it, it and it's one of its uh, foundational, you know, values that started with the Islamic Republic. So to be against the hijab in Iran, mandatory hijab in Iran, is to be against the Islamic Republic, right? Like, and the Islamic Republic of Iran. Mm, right now, I mean, this might change in the future, uh, sees, and its enemies also see attacking, you know, losing this war as a way, as losing the greater, you know, the greater battle, right? Like if, if, the, if the regime is forced into um, giving in to these demands of people wanting to have, you know, be able to choose what they wear, and seeing women without hijab in Iran shows that the government is losing its power and its legitimacy and the demand for an Islamic regime. And that's a major sign of weakness, which might embolden more people to ask for more or to try to see that the beast is wounded and try to kill it, right? Um, that's why uh, defending mandatory hijab for the Islamic Republic is more, it's not just about enforcing islamic laws it's about survival and this is why a lot of people say in iran the, the main enemies of the regime are women in iran like women in iran are if the regime ever falls people are like it's because women took it down right um hey, <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> no like hey this is this is again this is not just about a piece of cloth on like you have like i don't know how to explain this this is not just about a piece of cloth on your head right this is about the the hijab is like the islamic republic saying i still have power so know your place okay because if 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 women are uh, win this war people are like okay the people have the power 
the people are making the government make a step back. So everybody now attack. Look, the, the government is weak. The government is weak. So like go for his throat. Like that's what it means. Right. Um, and also, you know, the, the hijab is kind of the hijab in Iran is the stamp and it's a flag of the Islamic Republic. And every woman has been turned into a billboard for the Islamic Republic against their will. Right. So going everywhere and saying women having hijab is like the Islamic Republic means like, yes, we still are in charge. We are telling you what to do and you have to submit. This is a symbol of that. Right. Um, and this is like why women don't women who are against the Islamic Republic, they they are they know that they're being used as a propaganda piece, the entire their body that like this is like the government showing them that we're still in, everybody that we're still in power. Um, and again, just a mere one the campaign that just recently started, Susanna. I don't know, maybe you want to cover this next week. Are religious hijabi women that's what I was Iran. gonna talk about next, yes, yeah. Who are coming because okay so here's what's happening you, the, these campaigns used to be a, against mandatory hijab there for, for some people the, the, more of it now is turning against hijab as a whole not against mandatory hijab but people are like screaming you know screw the hijab like i piss on the hijab you know i burn the hijab um so a lot of religious people in iran who are against the islamic republic as well or maybe are not very sympathetic with it are worried that this mandatory hijab is making turning people against Islam, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm they're rightfully people... worried, by the way. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, these campaigns used to be against mandatory hijab. Now it's like, they're just, they were just anti-hijab. Like, they're concerned, right? Like, when you're turning people against Islam because of this, like, so. Um, so there, now there's a new campaign. So basically, we have three different campaigns now. There are people who are like, you know, I'm not against hijab, I'm against mandatory hijab, okay? These are some women, okay? There are some women who are like, no, I'm against... No, I'm against hijab. I'm against Islam. Like I, people, come, I, there's there was a famous video that went viral. Somebody said like shit on Islam. Like there was the, the hashtag on I shit on Islam became viral in, in Iran for a while, right? Oh, I remember now, that. Yeah. Now we have a third campaign. There are people, women who are like, I'm religious, and I'm a hijabi, and I like my hijab, but I'm against mandatory hijab. So this is now a third campaign. Like they're saying like I am. I am a hijabi against mandatory hijab. So this is a new campaign that is starting. And there are, you know, so people are torn on that. Some people are so anti-Islam um, that they're like, I don't, you know, you're religious, so screw you. Some people are like, oh, this is great. Because uh, the base that the Islamic Republic has is the religious people. If they lose that, then they lose everything. So there's, there's that as well. But anyways, do you want to watch these two? Which one do you want to watch first? This one or the famous bus? No, let's this go. Is... Let's go to the famous one because this is like the most important thing. Yeah. So let's watch this video, and if you could please do your translating again, that would be fantastic. Okay, so this is this is among all the um, disobedient hijab removal. This one what went got the most fame is right? because of and the, the most severe consequences. Yes. Okay. So I think like the regime, see, I'm telling you, the Iranian regime is careful. Okay. Like they're clever. They're not that idiots. Uh, they're not that stupid. Uh, so I think the, go the goal was to go and remove the hijab. Okay. And see the government and other people's reactions. Okay. And the Iranian regime realized that this is a tactic that is going to be used. And you know what they did, Susanna? They didn't, they, they tried to not arrest anybody. Like they were like they, they mm. were like so on the day that all these women took took off their hijab, they were like they're trying they're trying to take footage of us arresting them, and this is going to be used as a propaganda against them. So on that day where this campaign was uh, done, like they were like hands off. Like we, they, they were, the government is not allowing the opposition to make martyrs of the women who get arrested. Yes, like they want to do it. On, a day, on days where this is not the campaign that is happening, not all at the same time, one by less one. Less attention, maybe. less eyes on it. Yes, spread across mm. time, not, you know, so they were clever about it. They are, like, on that day, they were pretty hands off, okay? Except this case, except this mm -hmm. one bus case. And I mean, this also this one happened a few days after, but it didn't happen on the day. So they, they know what they're doing, okay? Um, anyway, so let me actually, so what ha what we're going to see is this bus incident. Um, we watched this on the Secular Jihadist show. 
and this is by Masih Ali Najjar again posted. So I could just actually there it already has translation, so I could just read the translation. So what? Yeah, let just me give you the context. Yeah, but this is just uh, let me just give you context. So in the so this hijabi woman, so the, this one the, um, was attacking the lady without proper hijab or without hijab, right? Um, she was, um, and oh, this is another important thing, right? So it's not just the government who attacks women that are not wearing their hijab. It's religious people who are, who are sympathetic with the Islamic Republic of Iran. They do Amr al Maruf and Nahez Munkar, meaning that they are doing this Islamic thing that they're supposed to tell, tell you what, when you're sinning or when you're going the wrong, when you're not doing things Islamically. But this uh, Islamic- self-policing. Exactly. So basically becoming a vigilante, uh, you know, enforcing vigilante justice, like you're not part of the government, but you're enforcing Islamic laws on upon, upon other people. And the government encourages that, right? So actually, this is very important because the government is claiming that people like Masih al who's encouraging women to take off their hijab in, in civil disobedience, they are turning people against each other, right? So they're like, oh, this is a foreign, this is a Western, people from Western countries are coming and meddling in Iran and telling women and, uh, to do this, to turn Iranians against each other, right? And the people are saying, first of all, this is not the people turning on each other. Women like this, who, hijab, like, who are attacking women with that uh, hijab, they, are, they don't, again, this is not my, this is not what I'm saying, this is what they're saying, is that they are not part of the people. They are not, th these are part of the government. They might not be officially the government, but they are arms of the government um, because the government is using civilians as a way to enforce its standards by encouraging them to, to just be their own po uh, police. Um, and they're saying like, we're not turning people against each other. This is, not, this is not about people against people in Iran. This is about people against the government because she's the government, she's not the people. And also there's some other people who suggest that the the the, peop, the forces that are t is turning people against each other is this Islamic notion of Abraham and Maru Fanahezmonkar, the Islamic teaching that everybody should be policing the community. So you're turning every you're turning civilians into by this you're turning civilians into the spies of the government or the police of the government, and everybody you're making people um, meddle in each other's business by encouraging them to do Amr and Mary and as can. And this is, it's not removing the hijab that is turning against people against each other. It's this, this teaching. Okay. Anyways, let's look at it. So this is a hijabi woman. So the woman who's recording the, her name is Sepide, right? She, she started recording and she wants to her to repeat what she said before she started recording. So she's saying, tell me the shit that you just said, say it again, say it again, because she wants it on camera. So look at it. So she, this hijabi woman, um, is now going to take out her camera because she's like, look, I could take a video of you too. Because the, the non-hijabi woman, the liberal woman, Sepide, she's recording this religious woman because she, the religious woman is meddling in her business about, about her lack of hijab. So the hijabi woman is like gonna take out her phone, like you look, I can record you too, okay? Yeah. Oh look, other people on the bus are oh, so for people who don't know, the bus is in Iran. It has two sections. The front is for men, the back is for women. So that women are men and women are not mingling, like touching each other all the time, right? Um so that's the men's in that section. So woman in the back of the bus, she was recording the liberal woman. The, another woman like pushed her hand away so that she doesn't record the non-hijabi woman. Okay, so now the hijabi woman is telling her like, you send this to Masi Ali Najad. Okay, but the liberal, the Sepide is saying, I send this to the whole world, like not just to Masih al the like, whole world is going to see you, okay? But she's saying, you're going to send, like the hijabi woman is saying, you send this to Masih al I'm going to send this to the Sepa, to the officials, to the to the armed forces. Like, you have Masih al and what is she going to do for you, like, basically? Like, she's like, okay, so yeah, the world will see me doing this, okay? But I have the armed forces, like, I have... I have the police, I have the Sepah on my side. 
Like they're going to come and get you. Like nothing is going to happen to me because of what you're recording. When you record me, nothing is going to happen to me. But when I record you, something is going to happen to you. That's what she she's said. right. Yeah, she's right because she did get because she did nothing happened to her. Like, yeah, the whole world saw her face, but she's fine. Okay, like she's like everybody's like, oh, boo, look at look at this religious woman meddling in someone else's business, but nothing happened to her. Sepide is now in jail because of her, she recording her. So technically, she was right. And like, yeah, sure, you record me, what's gonna happen? I have the army on my side. <laughs> So Sepah is like in English is a revolutionary guards. She's saying I'm going to send this to the revolutionary guards. <laughs> Look, people are hitting. Oh my God! <laughs> Look, people are so people like you have no idea. People are so frustrated with religious people, and this is why some some religious people some are concerned. People are like people hate us now. Like yeah. if I were a chador, if I were a religious, you you know, even like even like um, ten years ago, I remember my mom going to the bank, and there was a woman with chador, and they were not serving her because people hated her because she was wearing religious, uh, religious uh, hijab like chador, the chador, which shows that she was religious, and people were not serving her because you know, so it was bad. But well, now look, like, people you're trying are to pull her chador off here, like that's assault. That's not okay. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's not okay. We don't endorse this, but like, I, I also understand it. Like these people, these women here, these like, like you can see, you can see these these other women are liberals because when you see they're showing half their like the when the, the scarf ears. is all the way back here, all the way, and the the hair is showing, that means these people are not religious. These people are wearing their hijab because they're forced to. Okay, but these other women, they think like women like these have ruined their lives right they are if they get a chance to like show their frustration they will right Look. she's like she's like she's shouting you're filth you filth they're calling the hijabi the religious woman a filth <laughs> So the door, the bus door just opened, and as soon as it just opened, you hear sound. That means the bus door opened. As soon as it opened, Sepida is yelling like, "Throw her out! Throw that filth out!" <laughs> look, and everybody, look, everybody, like, look. Most people, like, even this woman that I thought was not particip participating, she did. Look, she just participated in pushing her out of the bus. Like, yep. Except these two religious women, then the, all these other women are united against the religious woman, and they're kicking her out of the bus. Look, they're hitting it. Oh my God! God they're, hitting damn. they're hitting her and pushing her out of the bus. <laughs> She's like, "Get out! Get out!" She's yelling, "Get out!" Look, you can hear the frustration. You can hear the anger. Like, get out, you filth! And they blur the other people, women's faces here so that they don't get into legal trouble. <laughs> All right, so oh, uh, oh, another thing is that she, the, some government officials have declared, declared that other religious woman as a hero in the story. So they came, the government came in support of the religious woman. Oh, but also somebody, oh, she's like, show me your hand, show me your hand, because apparently somebody, one of these women is bleeding, and she wants to catch that on camera as well. I don't know how, when did this happen, but apparently the religious woman scratched her. Oh, um. Another interesting thing is at the very end is like one woman said, like, look at these men. So it's pointing at the men in the bus and another woman yelled, why didn't you do anything? Why didn't you say anything? So the women are noticing how they're doing all the work <laughs> and the men are just looking. Right. So th this is a, a, some a major thing that is happening in Iran as well. A lot of people are pointing out how women seem to be on the front lines in opposing um religious authoritarian rules on people and men are men who are supposed to be have gay rat have honor and protect women and like this is a culture of honor in iran like oh i will like white knighty woman you know like like i mean like well where is that like women are like noticing like 
that doesn't when they come and arrest us for our prop, improper hijab like your people men are like a lot of women try to highlight men who are just standing by and just looking and you're like look this these are the men with are uh, supposed to have honor and just they're just looking like they keep highlighting men who are just looking right and here it, it happened as well okay again i'm not saying this is true i don't think that's fair i don't know if you would want uh, expect anybody to be able to sacrifice their entire to their lives to, and get in trouble with the officials i don't know if that's a fair expectation but i'm just at, telling you what the commentary one of the major commentaries you see like a lot of people are declaring this to be this revolution that they think it's about to happen a woman's revolution in iran like they say like mm. if this regime falls it's going to be because women are standing up not men right yeah um do you want to watch this video you know i think we should go to the next story okay okay anything but you want to highlight that's a really in? important point that you brought up it was really interesting right. yeah cool cool anything you want to highlight in the secular left rarity is saying you know this is an important this is an important comment secular rarity is saying there is no god but the algorithm yeah <laughs> okay hold on let so, me ask some... that's a reminder to please like this video yeah we should we should highlight some youtube member comments um when, when stuff like this happens can you say wait so it's the religious woman that was kicked out of the bus yeah the religious people are extremely against um you know many people are extremely against the religious any like people look down upon uh in iran especially in you know main, main cities if you're a mullah wearing a turban or if you're a woman with religious very religious outfits people just really look down upon you right um Okay, Kenny saying, well, you just said that the men and women are separated. How are they supposed to protect women if they can't mingle? Well, I mean, the, the expectation is to for you not to respect, like, I mean, if you're fighting this religious rule by the government, I don't think you're going to mind the fact that there's a rule that you're not supposed to come to the back of the bus. Like, you're like, hey, I would like, I would gladly gladly stand up against the regime to protect your rights but there's bus rules <laughs> like i am i will fight the regime i cannot <laughs> walk 15 feet down this bus that's too much yeah. <laughs> that rule i'm not i'm not gonna violate <laughs> uh yeah people something i, I don't remember is saying people are so frustrated yeah um what is uh, okay something i don't remember is also saying how can they even arrest them without a single female cop this is against the laws i mean oh, when it comes female cops they have female cops yeah they have a lot of female cops they come around and like the religious police they bring like chidori women with them and when they nab women for wearing bad hijab and kidnap them in a van like this literally happens like the chidoris are supposed to be the ones who are touching them so it looks like these freaking like death eaters just coming down to nab a woman into a van. It's freaking scary. Okay, so two more two more comments. Um, Christopher is saying, "Do you mean city people look down on them and the rural people praise them?" Okay, so when back maybe back when I was in Iran, it, the city people used to be more liberal, and um, they used to tend look down up on average anti-religious sentiments were more in um, in cities because of the liberal attitudes that more city people had. Again, not all, but just more. But now I think things have changed. Now um, the opposition against the religious authority is not because of people being liberal. It's also because people's lives and uh, economic power has reduced significantly. That so you could be say, overstated. So the there's rural, a general crisis, well, m numerous crises in Iran. Yeah. So rural rural people have also turned against religious authority as well um much more than back when i was in iran so there seems to be more agreement over anti mullah regime and anything that it represents it um even in rural areas compared to before so again again not all and last last comment by uh bread of life saying what do you think the percentage of very religious to non-religious are in iran now okay um so i don't know um very religious i don't know yet i could go look at the i could talk about go i can actually have the numbers uh, we could go through that in detail but i know uh, half of iran is not even as muslim anymore almost but if you could believe the studies that 
if you could believe the uh, stats that has came out, um, forget not religious, you know, not very religious, like not even Muslim, you know, almost half of Iran has left, possibly has left as well. But Muslim, among the Iran, people- according to this information, this data, Iran is a Muslim minority country. Yeah, within one generation, which is amazing if if that's true but among religious people how many of them are very religious and how many of them are um just religious just nominally muslim i don't know we could look at i could dig into the data later and figure that out together oh uh, just one more commentary can you say yeah but okay uh, yeah okay but they are separated in the video and this is all going very quickly i don't know if if i'd be able to reach the person in uh time to help yeah okay um fair point again let my that was an i mean to be fair there are certain men who are risking everything you know i don't think that's a there there's a lot of um worse off there's a lot of women in iran who are becoming (laughs) anti-men so um and i i don't i don't I'm just reporting you what they're saying. I'm not endorsing what they're saying because there's there are men in that have sacrificed so much in Iran for for the sake of other Iranians. So I don't think it's a fair point to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah, we deal with some uh, of the atheist Republic Persian side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we actually deal with a lot more guys. Like I think maybe Susie, <laughs> we should talk about this. We, I, I, we were talking about um, BDSM uh, tendencies with, uh, among Iranian women, um, the, and the, the the fact that it seems based on our based on the women that we meet on on the atheist side, there's not that many subs in them. Like they seem to be mostly. Uh, I mean, our data, our data, uh, our sample size might be very biased. Okay. But they seem to be mostly <laughs> interested in being doms, okay? It's, and a lot of them are interested in um, anal, but not Peggy. for them, you know? Pegging, yeah. yeah. So yeah. They, a lot of these women seem to be interested in using strap-ons on men. And I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Why is, it, why is that such a common tendency? And I was like, it just I just think like they were put in a position of submitting to the regime and stuff and men telling them what to do that I think that might have caused their sexual fantasies to be the opposite of that. You know, maybe I don't know. They like they are very interested. They seem to the liberal women that we talk to, they seem to be very interested in humiliating men. And some of them are like, actually humiliating men. Yeah, there's some of them who are interested in, you know, they're saying that this is a right. Like, this is not just about sexual fantasy. Yeah, I, like, some of them are saying that this, this has to be a right for them to, like, if, you, if men insert themselves inside women, it requires that they get to do the same thing. Like, this is not just a suggestion. This is something that men should be forced to give to women this is so <laughs> crazy <laughs> anyway, so again some women i'm not saying <laughs> no you came to me the other day and you're like Susanna, all the all the women in the atheist republic persian discord want to peg men i don't know what's going on is this normal and i'm like the, the <laughs> what you talk about it. I don't think that's normal. <laughs> Does he doctor is saying, now that's the revolution. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> this guy is worried. There's an Iranian man who's worried. <laughs> Protect your <Okay>. ass. <laughs> They're coming for your ass. Maybe we should have a revolution but for the safety of men in Iran, because I don't think they're very concerned about consent. Okay, so maybe for this, for the sake of the safety of men in Iran, we shouldn't have a revolution. I don't know. Oh just my a God. thought. <laughs> so crazy. All yeah, right. yeah. Something I don't remember is saying now. Men should realize why the, re- the Islamic regime should end. 
<laughs> shouldn't end. Okay. <laughs> oh, maybe something I don't remember actually is into that. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It promised saying, that's it. I'm moving to Iran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a good one too. Forever Stormy. <laughs> Forever Stormy saying, no wonder the mullahs are scared. They're worried about their asses. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> all right, all right, we should move that on. Took a we, turn. Uh, that took a turn. I didn't think a uh, discussion about mandatory hijab would end on this. Uh, can the we? Way it would end on mandatory pegging. <laughs> <laughs> Compulsory mm. pegging. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Guys, we have so much fun. They're arguing that that's their right as women. That's I don't think that's you know in any sort of like UN Geneva Convention. (laughs) They should be. I should be added. Yeah. Oh, Susie. Susie got. uh, Susie's got. Okay. Well, Susie is away. I'm going to explain the explanation. Is like she the you know the way it was explained to me is that they see sex as inflicting. Um, some sort of violence. Like when you go inside someone else's body, again, I'm trying to say it with the code uh, so that YouTube doesn't uh, strike us down, okay? Um, using coded language. Um, they say like when you are go inside someone's body, you're basically committing some sort of violence on it. And the only way against her, and the only way that you can have equality is for the men to experience some of that violence. That's what, that was, that was the argument. That's a very dark portrayal. <laughs> I, know, I know, it's weird. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.